electron transport chain the electron transport chain is also called as the respiratory chain it is composed of five enzyme complexes whereas four complexes belongs to electron transport chain and complex 5 belongs to oxidative phosphorylation but all these complexes are located on the inner mitochondrial membrane and their polypeptides originate from the 13 proteins encoded by the mitochondrial DNA and from the nuclear encoded proteins which are imported into the mitochondria. And this mitochondria take part an important role in oxidative phosphorylation as well as in the electron transport chain. In addition to their role in ETC and oxidative phosphorylation, mitochondria also participate in diverse cellular processes including apoptosis which is also called as the programmed cell death, production of reactive oxygen species, calcium homeostasis and the immunity. So all these are the functions of the mitochondria. Now what are the components of the respiratory chain? First we need to know the location of the electron transport chain. It is located in the inner mitochondrial membrane. The components are also called as electron carriers. Other than electron carriers we also have complexes. So when we talk purely about these electron carriers rather than complexes these are flavin mononucleotide abbreviated as FMN, ubiquinone or coenzyme Q and iron sulfur protein associated with FMN as well as cytochrome B and the cytochromes which are also called as heme proteins they are cytochrome B, C1, C, A as well as A3. All these are called as the electron carriers. So here the cytochromes which are called as heme proteins they contain heme iron whereas the cytochrome A, A3 in combination are called as cytochrome oxidase and beside heme iron they also contains copper which means they are copper containing heme proteins. Among the cytochromes which are listed over here only the cytochrome C is water soluble which means it is easily diffusible and also plays an important role in the programmed cell death which is also called as apoptosis. But whereas other cytochromes which are B, C1, A as well as A3 are lipid soluble and therefore are fixed to the components of the inner mitochondrial membrane. Now let us discuss in detail about the structural organizations of the components of electron transport chain. You have to note one important point here that the components of these respiratory chain do not function as a discrete carriers of reducing equivalents but are organized into four complexes each of which acts as a specific oxidoreductases. Here why are we talking only about four complexes why not complex 5? Because complex 1 to complex 4 are the components of electron transport chain and complex 5 belongs to the oxidative phosphorylation. And here the coenzyme Q as well as cytochrome C are not the part of the complexes and are not fixed in the inner mitochondrial membrane. The other components all are fixed in the inner mitochondrial membrane as you can see in this picture. So these components are arranged in order of increasing redox potential which means the reducing equivalents which are called as electrons flow only in one direction that is from complex 1 to complex 4. It is only because the redox couple with low redox potential is better electron donor whereas the one with high redox potential is the electron acceptor. That is why the reducing equivalents which are called as electrons flow through the chain of the components of the more negative redox potential to the components of the more positive redox potential. This is how the electrons are transferred from one component of the ETC to the next. 
Now let us discuss in detail about various complexes. First one is the complex one. The complex one is also called as NADH dehydrogenase ubiquinone oxidoreductase. And it is composed of approximately 46 subunits, but only 7 of which are of mitochondrial origin. And this complex one receives electrons from NADH. And it contains FMN and FAS complex. And this complex one pumps 4 protons, that is 4 hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space. So remember one important point here, complex 1 pumps 4 hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space. Next one is the complex number 2. Complex 2 does not belong to the complex 1 because complex 1 as well as complex 2 are separate. Because if electron transport chain begins with FADH2, the chain of events are from complex 2, complex 3 and complex 4. But if the electron transport chain begins with NADH, then the chain of events will be from complex 1 to complex 3 to complex 4 because the complex 2 is the succinate dehydrogenase which involves FADH2 but not the NADH. So remember guys, whenever NADH is entering into the electron transport chain, what are all the complexes you will see? complex 1, complex 3 and complex 4. If FADH2 enters into electron transport chain, what is the sequence? The sequence is complex 2, complex 3 as well as complex 4. This is the easy way to remember the whole electron transport chain process. So now let us talk what exactly is the complex 2 is. Complex 2 is also called as the succinate dehydrogenase ubiquinone oxidoreductase. And it is composed of only 4 subunits which are all of nuclear DNA origin. And this complex 2 transfers electrons from succinate to coenzyme Q. They are transferring electrons from succinate to coenzyme Q but they are not pumping the protons from the matrix into the intermembrane space. So complex 2 will never pump protons into the intermembrane space. So remember here that both succinate and NADH are products of Krebs cycle. Their electrons are transferred horizontally from complex 1 via NADH and complex 2 via FADH2 to a mobile lipid carrier in the inner membrane that is coenzyme Q which in turn transfers them to complex 3. So from complex 1 electrons are transferred to complex 3. From complex 2, electrons are transferred to complex 3. And this complex 2 contains FAD and FAS complex. So remember, a very important point regarding complex 2 is, complex 2 will never pump hydrogen ions into the inner membrane space, but complex 1 does. Right? So how many hydrogens are pumped into the inner membrane space by the complex 1? 4. What about complex 2? 0. Now let us talk about complex 3. Complex 3 is also called as ubiquinone cytochrome C oxidoreductase and it is composed of totally 11 subunits. Only one of them that is cytochrome B is encoded by the mitochondrial DNA and it contains cytochrome B and cytochrome C1 contain Resky FAS complex. And the electrons are transferred from complex 3 to complex 4 by means of cytochrome C which is another protein mobile carrier in the inner membrane space. And this is the one which pumps 4 hydrogen ions which are protons into the intermembrane space which is also called as inner membrane space. And next one is called as the complex number 4. The complex 4 is called as cytochrome C oxidase and it is composed of totally 13 subunits but uh, 3 of them are of mitochondrial origin. Complex 4 uses oxygen as the final electron acceptor to produce water molecules and it contains cytochrome A and cytochrome A3 now known as 
heme A A3 and copper A and copper B center. And this complex called as complex 4 pumps two hydrogen ions into the inner membrane space. And the final electron acceptor of the electron transport chain is the oxygen. So, if you see the overall picture here, if the electron transport chain begins from NADH, we have three complexes called as complex 1, complex 3 and complex 4. In the complex 1, four hydrogens are pumped that is four hydrogen ions, protons are pumped into the intermembrane space. In the complex 3 also, four hydrogen ions are pumped into the intermembrane space. But in the complex 4, only two hydrogen ions are pumped into the inner membrane space. So, the total number of hydrogen ions which are present in the intermembrane space by the end of complex 4 is 10. If the electron transport chain is by NADH, because we only have complex 1, 3 and 4. If the electron transport chain begins from FADH2, we do not have complex 1. We have complex 2, complex 3 and complex 4. Complex 2 is not pumping any of these hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space. So, 0 hydrogen ions are pumped into the intermembrane space by complex 2. And what about complex 3? 4 hydrogen ions and complex 4, 2 hydrogen ions. So, how many hydrogen ions are pumped into the intermembrane space if the electron transport chain is from FADH2? 6. What about from NADH? 10. So, that is the reason guys you have to remember 4 hydrogen ions which will enter into the mitochondrial matrix by means of complex 5 produces 1 ATP. If you talk about 4 hydrogen ions gives 1 ATP molecule which means 10 hydrogen ions which are pumped back into the intermembrane space produces 2.5 ATP. That is why we will call it as 1 NADH molecule is equal to 2.5 ATP. So, in the same way, if we have only 6 hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space by means of FADH2, then 4 hydrogen ions are giving 1 ATP and 2 hydrogen ions are giving half molecule of ATP. So, we only have 1.5 ATP molecules are produced by 1 molecule of FADH2 if it is entering into the electron transport chain. So, this is how we can say that 1 NADH is equal to 2.5 ATP and 1 FADH2 is equal to 1.5 ATP. So, all these four are the complexes of the electron transport chain. Now, let me talk about the complex 5 also. Anyway, we are going to discuss in the oxidative phosphorylation separately in detail about the complex 5. But together with the four complexes, let us discuss about the complex 5 which is also called as ATP synthase. And the ATP synthase is composed of totally 16 subunits, two of them that is ATP 6 and ATP 8 are from the mitochondrial DNA. And this ATP synthase by seeing the structure, it looks like a motor, right? There is a reason we can call it as it is the smallest molecular motor which is present in the human body. So, using the energy released by the electron transverse, complex 1, complex 3 and complex 4 pump protons from the matrix into the intermembrane space by creating an electrochemical proton gradient across the inner membrane. So, this electrochemical proton gradient which has been created because of the pumping of the hydrogen ions from the mitochondrial matrix into the intermembrane space responsible for the generation of ATP by means of complex 5. So, that is the reason ATP is generated by the complex 5 when these hydrogen protons flow back down their concentration gradient or we can say down their electrochemical gradient into the mitochondrial matrix. So, using the energy released by the electron transverse, right, this is how the ATP has been produced. So, this is called as electron transport chain. Let us talk about the flow of reducing equivalence. Whenever we use the word reducing equivalence, we are calling them as electrons. Reducing equivalence are nothing but called as electrons. 
So what about the flow of reducing equivalents, so-called electrons? And what is the sequence of these electron flow? Most of the substrates transfer their reducing equivalents to NAD to form NADH and the reaction is catalyzed by dehydrogenases and the reduced NADH is oxidized by NADH dehydrogenase which is also called as NADH coenzyme Q reductase which is the complex one an enzyme which contains FMN as a coenzyme and also an FES protein which is nothing but called as the complex one of ETC. So the NADH transfers reducing equivalents first to FMN which in turn transfers reducing equivalents to FES and the FES transfers the electrons so called reducing equivalents to coenzyme Q. This is how the electrons are transferred to the coenzyme Q and the further transfer is in the sequence of cytochrome B, FES, cytochrome C1, cytochrome C, cytochrome A, cytochrome A3, right? This is the sequence. So, if we talk about the succinate, succinate is the one which transfer it reducing equivalents to FADH2 which transfer them to FES and the FES is the one which transfer these reducing equivalents to coenzyme Q and further the sequence is same, same like what I already discussed about the NADH. And now let us talk about the formation of ATP and the sites of ATP synthesis which is called as oxidative phosphorylation. So this is how the electrons are transferred or carried by the electron carriers as well as complexes by means of NADH as well as FADH2.